So at this point, uh, we are now going to do something that has become a very special part of the Steamboat Institute, and that is our Tony Blankley Chair for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism. I would like to invite to the stage to talk about the fellowship and present the award our uh, board member, Matt Spaulding, who is Dean of Educational Programs at Hillsdale College in Washington, D.C., as well as um, our current Blankley Fellow, Kelsey Harkness, and Tony Blankley's wife, Linda Davis, to do tonight's very special award presentation. Thank you. Um, yes? Oh, first we need, we have a video. I mean, I've been fighting a liberal media in Washington for 30 years. The country ought to be based on individual liberty and limited government and, and low taxes. I think we all need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. This is why I need to be here for you. If they knew that, that's a gold mine. Reform the corporate tax code. It's a simple fact. What does it mean to be a U.S. citizen? You know, there are different groups of people who subscribe to different philosophies. If conservatives were in charge, we would all be better off. I wouldn't be a good conservative if I didn't say that, right? One of the best investigative journalists in the world. It's really taxpayers that are paying for this program. This is something that millennials are picking up the tab for your generation. I think this is a broader critique of the social justice movement. The media and the Democrats are going to do all they can to blame Republicans. It's important for conservatives to reach young women. We need to empower them with the knowledge and information they need. I am incredibly humbled and honored for the opportunity to remind people of Mr. Blankley's important legacy through my work. Hi there, I'm Tom Rogan. I'm sorry I can't be with you at the 10th Annual Steamboat Freedom Conference this weekend, but I want you to know that I'm there with you in spirit. I also want to say a very special congratulations to Philip Wegman, my colleague and friend, who I know will deliver on the auspicious record of the previous chairs, myself excluded, and will live up to Tony's legacy uh, as much as anyone can. Phil, congratulations. Hope you have a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you all next year. Uh, thank you, and on behalf of the board, I wish you all a wonderful evening. I'm very happy and proud to be associated with the Steamboat Institute. Um, and I would like to say a, a, a few words about the Tony Blankley Chair for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism. Uh, this is the annual award the Steamboat Institute gives to provide high profile recognition and financial support to extant, outstanding young journalists who share the principles of the Steamboat Institute. It's, if you will, an opportunity to jumpstart their careers and put them on the road to becoming thought leaders. It, of course, is named for Tony Blankley. Um, it's, it's named in his honor. Um, I first met him, who is the editorial page editor of the Washington Times, and watched him in fascination for his wonderful job as press secretary to Speaker Newt Gingrich. And, of course, he was a regular panelist on the McLaughlin Group. Uh, we've got an excellent selection committee. Uh, Ed Meese, with uh, former attorney general, uh, Steve Hoffman, former Assistant uh, Secretary of Labor, Mary Kissel with the Wall Street Journal, Lauren Maddox for, with the Department of Education, uh, Tom uh, McDevitt, who's the Chairman of the Board of the Washington Times, uh, John O'Sullivan with National Review, John Roberts, who produces the McLaughlin Group, uh, Tom Ro Rogan, of course, uh, Tony's widow, widow, Dr. Linda Davis, and me. How can we go wrong? Um, it, was, uh, it was a hard choice this year, but we we have made excellent choices. Uh, we've made very excellent choices uh, thus far. Um, I have to, so, so Tom Rogan calls me before the selection was made. And some of you might not know this, but Tom's a rather insecure fellow. It turns out that he's, he uh, felt insecure because there were three articulate, attractive, and successful women who were the fellows, and he wanted to know if I could help him out a little bit. 
And I said, Tom, Tom, that would, that would, that would be wrong. We just, we can't do that. That would be wrong. That would be like me trying to push someone from Hillsdale College. That was funny. Um, so the selection committee did the next best thing, which was uh, we chose by far the best candidate. Uh, and to introduce that, uh, the awardee, I turn, turn this over to last year's awardee, Kelsey Harkness. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Rick. And most importantly, thank you, Linda, for giving us all this opportunity to allow Tony Blankley's legacy to live on through the work of journalism, through uh, us young and up-and-coming journalists ourselves. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Kelsey Harkness. I am with the Daily Signal at the Heritage Foundation. And I am particularly honored to introduce you all to this year's fellow, um, because this year's fellow I have known for five years. He began his career as an intern at the Heritage Foundation. Prior to that, he was a graduate of Hillsdale College, conveniently. <laughs> now you get the joke. <laughs> Uh, Phil kicked off his career uh, with me at the Daily Signal just as we were getting this small new multimedia news organization off its feet and very quickly we realized that he had something special and uh, myself and some of the other first reporters who joined the team really advocated for Phil to come on full time as a reporter and luckily we got our way. Phil uh, joined us as our first ever congressional reporter. And there he really proved himself through blood, sweat, and maybe some tears. He's a very aggressive reporter. Some would argue inside Heritage may be too aggressive at times. Um, but uh, Phil, Phil really proved himself. He's willing to put in the hours and the hard work. And he also has the personality to fit, which I think is very important to Phil, Mr. Blankley's legacy, because he had such an enormous personality. Um, since then, Phil has moved on to the Washington Examiner, where he has joined their commentary team. Uh, he's also a member of the editorial uh, team there, and I think this has been a great fit for Phil because he does have some opinions that he enjoys to share. Um, but but in doing this, he's able he, he's been able to keep his reporting roots and also build on those and launch more serious investigations, which um, I, I think we've only seen just the beginning of. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Phil into the Steamboat family and invite him up on the stage uh, for this enormous honor. great to be back with you all. Um, I was sad today I couldn't stand up and say all 10 years. Uh, last year I did have to um, beg off and be absent because of family obligations and commitments and illness. Tony's sister passed and um, so doing I was unable to be with you when Kelsey received her um, award or nomination or selection. So I heard something from a few of you about we missed something. So Kelsey, I want to give you your pair of shoes, assuming that your shoe size hasn't grown. I know your head hasn't. And Chelsea, as the Capita Yoga girl, has a multifaceted personality that's already been such an asset to the Blankley Fellows. And so Phil from the Hill, which is his tag, which you don't know, he's a motorcycle enthusiast, 
and a biker. So how's that for the conservatives that never have any fun? Phil, when you go biking, you will be careful, but you will also be able to wear your blue suede shoes. Well, thank you so much for that, that lovely introduction, Kelsey. Um, I've learned so much from her and uh, looking forward to following in her footsteps. Um, prepared some remarks. The journey across the Atlantic Ocean for most immigrants was nothing less than horrific. Herded onto decrepit steamers, they were cramped, crowded, and miserable for months. But when these ships chugged into New York Harbor, everything changed in a moment. As the coast approached, miseries were forgotten, railings were crowded, and a structure of copper and steel emerged. This manifestation of America was the Statue of Liberty. This man-made colossus was the purpose for their sacrifice. This was freedom. And yeah, I know I sounded like a Hallmark card right there a little bit. Um, we're all cynics these days, and we're all tempted to roll our eyes at high-minded, idealistic principles but we absolutely cannot afford to. They're more essential than ever to achieving and preserving American exceptionalism because right now, I believe the threat to our country has never been greater. We have forgotten that freedom is the exception to the human experience, not the rule. We conveniently ignore that up until about 300 years ago, existence really was misery. And we are suddenly unimpressed with our inheritance of this miraculous constitutional form of government. And my generation in particular is guilty of this kind of systemic ingratitude. Right now, irreverent political hipsters are trying to resurrect the most murderous and most brutal regime the 20th century has ever seen. They don't care that history shows how socialism has failed again and again and again. They've rebranded it in Brooklyn and they call it democratic socialism now. They suddenly expect something besides the abject poverty, horrific suffering, and murderous death that has defined every socialist regime from old Russia to modern Venezuela. It's the clinical definition of insanity. And so because it's incredibly dangerous, something has got to be done about it. But, and just to be clear, it isn't good enough to just own the libs. No one who doesn't already agree with us will listen to our scripted rants on cable news. Emerging tyrannies will not suddenly fall because a couple college students started wearing political t-shirts. And no, resurgent Marxism will not be defeated with memes. Don't get me wrong, we ought to have confidence in our ideas, and we ought to have a bit of swagger when we argue. But we should avoid the temptation to be glib, and we should never slander the opposition with cheap sloganeering. To win the debate, we have to address their arguments with sophistication and rigor, and then we need to completely and totally obliterate them. <laughs> we have to make our case by appealing to what Abraham Lincoln called the mystic chords of memory. We have to rededicate ourselves to the principles of 1776, the same principles which created the opportunities that inspired those immigrants to risk everything, to crowd into cramped boats, and to come to this country. This means appreciating what previous generations handed down to us, improving on it occasionally, of course, but always preserving it for posterity. It requires relearning gratitude on a grand scale. In a lot of ways, I think this fellowship is about exactly that. It's about gratitude. I certainly didn't know Tony Blankley in his prime. He passed as I was entering my first year of college. But I do know the wicked wit of Tom Rogan. I know the singular kindness of Kelsey Harkness. And I know the truly excellent bylines of both Jillian Melcher and Hadley Heath Manning. Because of their work, I've become familiar with Mr. Blankley's legacy, and now, I have the opportunity and I have the responsibility to defend what he strove for. And this is where I think good journalism comes in. When stories are written with imagination and when arguments are made beautifully, journalism isn't simply a record of what just happened. As one of my professors explained to me, 
Journalism can become instead the literature of what just happened. One might say it's the sort of thing that inspires American greatness. That's because American grit is real, and that's because the West will always have a chance so long as we do not abandon the principles that made this country exceptional and so attractive to the rest of the world. With that foundation in place, along with the overwhelming historical and economic evidence, we cannot lose the argument. So I'd like to thank Linda Davis for the incredible responsibility of continuing Mr. Blankley's legacy. I am honored and I will do my best. I'd like to thank the selection committee. I know the competition was steep and I'm incredibly lucky to be here. And I want you all to know that I'm very grateful for this job and I won't let you down. Thank you.